So good morning, let's start. We were speaking about pole placement based on input output models. Let's recall briefly what is the problem, then the algorithm that we deduced yesterday to design the controller, and uh, uh, the bulk of this lecture is devoted uh, to examples of, of applying this algorithm. So. Uh, your plant is described, is assumed to be described by a digital transfer function with polynomials B and A. And uh, we assume that there are no common roots, in uh, no common factors in B and A. So uh, there are no, there is, there are no pole zero cancellations. Uh, this is reasonable uh, in an intuitive way because uh, you are working with the simplest possible model from an input-output uh, point of view. And um, actually, this is related with the state space uh, representation in the sense that uh, uh, if you uh, write a minimum degree state model for B over A, you get uh, this state model will be observable and controllable. Uh, here, in the strict um, framework of this algorithm, uh, this assumption will be needed for the solution of an equation, which is a, a new form of equation for polynomials called the Diophantine equation. And um, for this equation to have uh, to ensure that uh, this equation has a solution, then uh, we can make this assumption. So this is a sufficient uh, condition for a solution of an equation that will appear, design equation that will appear. So we have the plant B over A. D is the disturbance, R is the output. Sometimes I call it also UC. And Y is the output. And I have a feedback controller. And my controller is described in this way. So uh, a polynomial R filters U, and this must be equal to a polynomial T filtering R minus a polynomial S filtering Y. Uh, an, equivalent, an equivalent scheme is U is equal to the transfer function T divided by R filtering the reference minus S divided by R filtering Y. Okay. Although I uh, explained to you yesterday that uh, this form, uh, if you write the corresponding uh, difference equation, is very um, practical to implement in a digital computer because it just tells you that U is a linear combination of previous values of U the reference and previous values of the reference and the output and previous values of the output. So remember, I gave one example in which uh, R, T, and S were first order polynomials. And by uh, in, the, in the forward shift operator Q, and we can write U of K as this linear combination of past values of the control the reference, and uh, y. So our problem is to find this controller in such a way that the uh, transfer function between the reference and y is specified. So we have a so-called model reference transfer function, that is to say, a target transfer function. Uh, which is dm divided by am. Again, I uh, assume that am and bm are co-prime, that is to say they have no common roots, that, the same thing, that is the same thing as saying that uh, uh, there are no common roots, is to say that polynomials am and bm are co-prime. And uh, the problem is select r, s, and t, such that the closed loop uh, has this transfer function dm over am. And your controller must be causal, okay? So uh, 
your decision on u at time k must depend on information available at time k. For instance, you, you may not make uk dependent on y of k plus 1, because uh, at time k, you have observed y up to time k, so y of k plus 1 is in the future. If you would depend on y of k plus 1, the controller would be non-causal, and we are looking for causal controllers. That's the ones that you can implement uh, without delay and in a practical situation, you don't know the future. So to solve this problem, yesterday uh, we have deduced an algorithm. Let's recall the algorithm. So the data is your polynomials B and A, the process model. Okay? This comes from system identification. So you study your system and somehow using the methods of the first part of, of this course, you get polynomials B and A. Now, uh, you must have specifications, a BM divided by AM, and these specifications cannot be done at random. Of course, they must uh, verify uh, conditions that you specify, for instance, uh, the speed of response of the system to a square wave. Okay? You, you, you impose, for instance, that uh, the uh, rising time is smaller than some value, or uh, the overshoot is smaller than some value. But then you have other types of, of uh, constraints. First of all, AM of Q must be stable, must be a polynomial uh, such that all its roots are inside unit circle because you want the closed loop stable the closed loop system to be stable so you, you are going to specify closed loop to be stable then dm must uh, uh, must comply with some conditions uh, one of the conditions that comes from causality is that you see the, the difference, I represent the degree of a polynomial by this delta, del uh, sign, the partial derivative sign. So when I write partial derivative A, this you should write, you should read uh, degree of A. So degree of A minus degree of B, that's the difference of the number of poles and the number of zeros, that's the delay of the system in open loop. And uh, degree of AM minus the degree of BM, you must remember from what we have studied before some weeks ago, it's the uh, difference of, again, the difference of uh, the number of poles and the number of zeros of the uh, reference model. That's the delay of the reference model that you specify. And uh, this condition comes from causality. For your controller to be causal, uh, the delay that you specify can be at least equal to the to the delay of the process model. That is to say, you cannot decrease the delay, the pure delay of the process model. You can keep it the same or increase it. Now, you don't want a system to respond with delay, so typically you are going to select your AM and BM with a difference of degrees such that the delay is kept the same as in the open loop. Later we are going to see some examples. Uh, you also um, have to select the number of integrators in the controller. Okay, that's this factor lambda or this term lambda. Usually it's zero. No, you are not forcing an integrator or one. You are forcing a one integrator. You know that an integrator uh, in the controller is uh, important when you want to exactly track a reference. Now, uh, the other thing is that uh, when you do a feedback, you are shifting the, the position of the poles. But uh, you, when you want to move the position of a zero, the only option 
is to cancel the zero and then to create another zero in the position that you want. Now, you are not allowed to uh, cancel zeros outside the unit circle because that would uh, require the creation of a pole outside the unit circle. And even though it cancels uh, the zero, this means that from an input output point of view, everything is okay. There is no, no unstable pole. But inside the system, there will be an unstable mode that will cause, uh, in the long run, the system to uh, saturate. And uh, your, your controller would no longer work properly. So you are not allowed to cancel zeros that are outside the unit circle. So what you do, you look at the polynomial B, whose roots are the zeros of the open loop system, and you divide this as a product of two polynomials, B plus and B minus. B plus has all the zeros that you are going to uh, cancel. And B minus has all the zeros that you are not, are not going to cancel. In B, in B minus, you must have all the zeros that uh, you may not cancel. So all the zeros outside the unit circle are in B minus. But sometimes a zero is within the unit circle, but you don't want for some reason to cancel it. So you place it in B minus. So B minus has the zeros that you don't want or you are not allowed to cancel. And B plus has the zeros that you are going to cancel. And to make, to make this uh, factorization unique, you select B plus as monic, that is to say the leading coefficient is one. Okay, once you do this, this means that what I just said means that your zeros that uh, are in B minus must be in your specification. So your specification BM must have this B minus zeros and something else. This something else can be a constant or another polynomial where you for some zeros for some reason. The other thing is that again for causality, this is something that I had not proved, but I told you the proof is a little bit cumbersome, although it's not difficult. If some of you want, I can send you a text with all these proofs. The polynomial, there is a polynomial uh, which is a common factor in the transfer function. So your closed loop transfer function will be BM divided by AM times AO divided by AO. And this polynomial AO that I call the observer polynomial must have a minimum degree. Okay, and the minimum degree is computed in this form. You know that this is the degree of A, you know it. This is the degree of AM, you, you know it because you have specified AM. This is degree, the degree of B plus, you have computed B plus in this factorization. And this is the number of integrators. So you can compute AO. You can compute the degree of AO. Now, what, how, can you, how can you select AO? There are two choices, the so-called scholar choice and the engineering choice. Okay. The scholar choice is good for the exam, although it does not work in practice, except in uh, simulations or system, uh, systems without any disturbance. Uh, it is to make AO uh, to have all the roots at the origin with the minimum degree. So suppose that degree of AO should be bigger or equal to 2. Then you select AO to be Z up to Z squared. Okay, Z up to 2. Uh, this choice uh, is very convenient for computations, but it's not a good engineering choice. Why? The role of this polynomial AO is to um, filter noise. And when you put all uh, the roots of the filter at the origin, you are not filtering any, anything at all. 
So you are letting all the noise to pass. And uh, uh, so what happens is that it would be better to uh, select a O such that the pole is not at the origin. So you select one pole and uh, probably do some simulations or experiments with your plan and adjust the value of AO, say typically 0.9, a pole at 0.9. So Z minus 0.9 up to the minimum degree of AO. Okay. If I say nothing in a problem and you are at the exam or the test, okay, select all the poles at the origin, Z squared or Z cubed or Z or just one. Okay. It's important that this is monic. Uh, it's immaterial for the computation, the, whether you place a coefficient or not, because if you place it, it will disappear. But it, it will simplify the computations to be done further later. If you select a yo uh, as monic, so the leading coefficient to be one. Now, having a yo and b prime m, remember b prime m uh, is. Uh, your specifications, let's look it back. Your specification BM has the part of the zeros that you may not cancel and something else. And B prime M is this something else. So it's something that you have specified. Uh, and T is B prime M O. This is something that we have uh, deduced yesterday. And then polynomial, there are two polynomials, R prime and S. From R prime, you compute R by multiplying by the integrator term. If lambda is zero, this term is not here because this term up to zero is one, so it's not here. And uh, you multiply B plus by R prime times the integral term and you get R. So from this equation, that's the so-called Diophantine equation, uh, what you do, you get R prime and S, and from R prime you get R. Now, uh, the fact that the coefficient, well, what is the structure of this equation? Let's uh, remember it again. So you have a polynomial, which is Q minus one lambda A, something that you know, this is a, a kind of coefficient polynomial, times a polynomial that you don't know, this is, part of your unknowns, R prime, plus a polynomial that you know, B minus, times a polynomial that you don't know, equal to a polynomial that you know. At this moment, you know AO and you know AM. Okay, so this is a Diophantine equation. And the condition for this Diophantine equation to have a solution is that the uh, maximum common dividers of the two coefficients, so, Q minus one lambda a and b minus uh, is one. Uh, sorry, is divides a o a m. Now what happens is that these two polynomial polynomials have no common roots, so the maximum common divider is one, and one divides exactly any polynomial, particular a o a m. So this solution has at least one. This equation has at least one solution, and uh, actually it has an infinite number of solutions. If you have one solution, then you can build systematically uh, other solutions. And you want to have a minimum degree solution to your controller so that your controller is as simple as possible. So you select S such that it has a degree smaller than the coefficient of R prime. So you have this condition for the degree of S. Suppo suppose that degree of A is two, and you have one integrator, so this is three. So your degree of S can be uh, zero, a constant, one or two, because this is three and the degree of S must be smaller than three. Uh, also, you can show, this is something that I did not show, uh, but you believe in me, and this is not correct, there is not a misprint, that the degree of R prime can be computed in this way and everything here you know. So how do you solve the Diophantine equation? You uh, place uh, a generic pol polynomial R prime here 
and you, you place also a generic of degree computed from this formula. You compute, you place here a generic polynomial S, and the most generical one would be a polynomial that verifies this condition. And then you compute using, you equate the, the, you equate the powers, the coefficients of the corresponding powers in Z in both sides. And you get equations for the coefficients of polynomial A prime and polynomial S. Okay. Probably this looks a little, little bit uh, uh, strange, but uh, in a moment we are going to see an example. Okay, so let's, let's uh, start looking at the examples. So this example is um, a simple DC motor. You have a DC motor with a time constant of one in some system of units. Typically, uh, if, you, if you have a, a small servo motor, small DC servo motor, the typical uh, time constant is something between uh, five milliseconds and 20 milliseconds. If it is a good, a good motor, it will be closer to five milliseconds. Uh, if it is uh, slower, usually uh, no more 10, 10, 12 milliseconds. Okay, but let's assume it's one, okay? One second, it's a very slow motor. Okay, but let's do it like that. And uh, of course, uh, this coefficient here would not be one, but let's assume it's one. Anyway. I could have placed here anything else uh, that relates to the tension applied to the motor. So uh, my number UK that represents my control action is transformed in an electrical tension by the VA. Then I have a power amplifier and I apply uh, the tension. This is, uh, this has a gain one. I apply this tension with enough power to the motor and it starts rotating. And my output is the measure of uh, the angle of, of the shaft of the motor. So I take samples with the DA and I have YK. So in continuous time, what do I have? Uh, between the tension applied to the motor and the velocity of the motor, I have a first order system. Okay? That's why I have one pole at minus one. Yeah. And then between the velocity of the motor and the angle of the shaft, I have an integration that's between velocity, angular velocity and angular position. I have one integration. Okay? I integrate the velocity to get the position. So I put a zero, uh, I put a, a pole at the origin in continuous time. Now I have the DA and the, and the, and the AD, this is, sorry, this is an ID. Okay? It's a discrete. So uh, what do I do? Uh, I can uh, make some computations that we have studied before to get the equivalent discrete time transfer function. And I get this result, okay? Where K, B, and A are coefficients related to the sampling time H in this way, okay? So if I select the sampling time H to have some value, uh, then I can, uh, K, A, and B are just numbers, okay? And you can see that the pole at the origin in continuous time became a pole at one in discrete time. So this is the interval action here. Okay, this is the pole of the motor. And then we have a zero, okay, you see? The open loop, the continuous time system does not have zeros, but the discrete time system has a zero, has a zero. And, uh, Probably uh, there are some values of h such that this becomes negative. If this becomes negative, then I have a negative zero, okay? Because minus a negative number is a plus, okay? So this is z plus some positive number and the root is a negative one. So there are values of the sampling interval that make this, uh, uh, that make this, uh, zero um, 
have a, a negative real value. Okay? Remember that the stability is imposed by the poles. And uh, we have a pole at one, that's the boundary of stability, and we have a pole at a, a, the exponential of minus h, which is smaller than one because the exponential is decreasing. And for h equal to zero, you have one and then it decreases. So this pole is pole at a is inside the unit circle. Okay, but that's immaterial for the design. Now I must I must um uh, I must uh, now write the specifications. Okay, so uh, I start looking at the poles, and uh, I place here a second order polynomial because my open loop system is of order two. I have two poles, so I'm placing two poles. So I said uh, my AM is a second order polynomial. And uh, how can I select this P1 and P2? Okay, remember uh, one possibility we have discussed that some, some weeks ago. Uh, imagine that you have a continuous time second order system. So you characterize it by a damping factor psi and um, a natural frequency omega n. And you map this psi and omega n to P1 and P2 according to these formulas. So I have P1 and P2, okay? And then I have this complicated formula here. Now, since I'm very much tired of speaking now for uh, half an hour, uh, I would uh, ask your help. So please tell me, uh, is this choice reasonable or not? So I have for BM, I'm selecting z times 1 plus p1 plus p2. So what is the reason for the z? And what is the reason for 1 plus p1 plus p2? Or there is no reason and I just mixed up something in the slide. So um, I ask for speakers, volunteer speakers. No volunteer speakers? What about forced speakers? Let's let's look at the one plus p1 plus p2. What do you think this comes from? Is there a reason? There are the coefficients in the denominator. Okay, so uh the other coefficients in the sum of the coefficients in the denominator so this choice makes 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 hm equal to uh, have what particular feature Let, let's think in another way uh one thing that you would like to do is that uh when uh, you, when you have a reference then the output in the long run in steady state will be equal to that reference so you don't want to have say uh, to multiply the reference by some factor to get the output in steady state okay you just want the the steady state to be equal to the reference the the, the output to be equal to the reference in steady state so does this choice satisfy that? What do you have to look at HM to ensure that you are specifying something that says in steady state that will be reached if the system is stable? And it is because we have your poles are inside unit circle. Okay, this choice ensures stability. Then uh, in steady state the if i specify if i have a, a nr say of uh, five then my output will be also be five in steady state what is important in, in whatever hm that you select 
maybe to get the static gain, we'll place Z by one? That's right. So the static gain should be one. And what happens here the, with the steady state? Can you say again, probably with a better phrase in this case? I think the, the steady state is omega equal to zero. So C is e to the power of zero, which is one. So the static gain there well, is one. So the static gain, it will depend on, on omega because maybe I, I have not heard you well, but omega affects P1. But what is important is looking at this transfer function. So you, to, co to see the static gain of this transfer function, what you do, you do, what? Can you repeat it again? I to think it's Z gain. equal to one. Z equal to one, that's right. So in this case, if you make Z equal to one, you get, what is the, the value that you get here? One. One, okay? Because Z equal to one is one, it does not affect, and this becomes one plus P1 plus P2, okay? So I just placed here the sum of the coefficients of the denominator. First, I, I select the denominator, okay? According to, uh, um, to considerations related uh, to speed of response and overshoot and so on, and stability, of course. And then I put here the sum of the coefficients because this ensures, this ensures that we have static gain of one. Everybody understands this? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Now we have this mysterious Z. If I had not Z, it would be the same because when you make Z equal to one, this term becomes one. So why have I placed this Z? One possible answer is just to complicate things because professors like to complicate things. That's not a reason. There is a good engineering reason to put place that as Z. What is the difference of the response with the Z or without the Z? So you have some response without the Z. Now, you have another, another transfer function in which I include this Z. What is the, the relation between the two responses? What's the effect of multiplying by Z? Mm, there are some oscillations. No, no. Z does what? Suppose that you have, well, multiplying by Z in time is multiplying, multiplying by Z in the, the transform domain is multiplying by Q in the time. So if you apply the shift operator Q and you have some um, X of K, you have a sequence X of K, if you apply, if you multiply by Q, what sequence do you get? If the original one was X of K. X of K plus one. X of K plus one. So you are shifting forward, okay? So what is the, what is the effect of this Z here? In, in the time domain? It's a delay. It's, can you repeat it? Maybe it's a delay. A delay. Uh, it would be delay if it were a division. Now, if you are multiplying by, if I was dividing by Z, I had a Z minus one. A Z minus one is, shift, is a shift backwards, okay? Now, if I multiply by Z, I do a shift forward. So am I making the system faster or slower by adding this C? The response, this is the, yeah. my desired response. Am I, making my, my, am I making my desired response faster or slower? Eu estou, quando eu incluo Z, estou a fazer a resposta faster. mais rápida ou mais lenta? Can you, you said something? Faster. Faster, okay. So multiplying by Z, um, forward shift, so your response is faster. So why not multiply by Z square or by Z cube? If I, if I would multiply it by Z squared, it would be twice faster. By Z cube, three times faster, three samples, three samples faster. 
and so on. Why not to, to do that and just plus that a Z? Uh, I um, think because that, that comes. Uh, one of you and then the other. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, I think that uh, there comes a time when we we turn uh, the system becomes not not causal. Okay, why not? Let me go back. Because if we keep shifting forward, maybe uh, we are depending the variables of the future, I guess. Remember this condition? Mm -hmm. uh, what, there was another colleague that wanted to speak. Uh, yep. Uh, I agree with Eduardo, but I was saying that maybe it's because of the number of poles and uh, zeros. And uh, if we, for example, choose z equal uh, z squared, uh, we have the name the same number of poles and zeros, and that maybe will counteract that uh, satisfaction. Okay. So according according to okay, okay. Let me go to here. So you saying you saying. Uh, if uh, I place here z, this is this is causal, isn't it? Because I have first order up and second order down, so the delay is one. Then what about z squared? Is it still causal? Yes, because I have z squared and z squared, so the response is instantaneous. You know, the delay is zero. It's the difference of poles and zeros. Okay. So z squared makes a hm to be causal. Uh, what about um, uh, z cube? Z cube? No. So uh, z squared makes hm causal. Z cube? No, because I have three zeros and two poles. The delay would be minus one. So it's an advance. It responds before being excited. Now it could be z squared. Why not put place here z squared? HM is causal. Let's let's look at the first slide. Here, when I spoke about the specifications, remember there is a condition that is related. You you not only want your BM over BAM to be causal, but also, you want your controller to be causal. And for the controller to be causal, one of the conditions, it's not the only one, but one of the conditions is that the delay that you specify is at least the delay that you have. You see? You have this condition here, which is a little bit more tight than just saying that BM over AM is causal. Uh, I will say this in Portuguese. Uh, Além da causalidade do BM sobre a AM, é preciso impor que o controlador seja causal. E para uma das condições de causalidade do, do controlador é que o atraso que nós estamos a especificar tem que ser, no mínimo, o atraso do processo em cadeia aberta, grau de A menos grau de B. Everybody understands? Or is there anyone that does not understand? Okay, so I assume that everybody understands. So here, so uh, this is our plant, your, our B over A. So what is the delay of this plant? You have how many poles? Yeah, two poles and one zero, so the delay is one. The delay is one. So. The minimum degree that you can uh, have is one, okay? You cannot have a degree of zero. So if you had not the Z, suppose that I had not placed Z here. In terms of the static N, it is okay. But in terms of the delay, what is the delay? You have a coefficient. So I don't have, I, I'm assuming that I, I did not place this Z. Uh, 
So what is the degree here in the degree downstairs, upstairs and downstairs? It would be two. The, the delay would be two, okay? And uh, remember the minimum degree was, the minimum, minimum delay is one. So uh, we have, without a Z, we, we are specifying something with a delay of two. It's okay, the delay can be bigger, but uh, you can do better. Okay, because you can have a system with delay one. So I'm at a Z, okay, to make things a little bit faster without changing the shape. And uh, so the delay now is one, okay. If I add here Z squared, then the delay would be zero. But this violates, this violates, sorry. Violates this condition because uh, I would have zero on the left. I would be specifying zero, delay of zero, and the minimum the delay is the open loop plant delay, which is one. Okay, so that would violate this condition. Okay, so remember, so what is the, what is the procedure? The procedure is that okay, you select the poles, then you select the coefficient so that the static gain is one. And then you look, what is the minimum delay that I can uh, have? And the, the minimum delay is the delay of the open loop plan. So I had here a power of Z such that uh, I have the minimum delay again. Okay? Otherwise, if I had a uh, smaller delay, it would be, it would be, uh, it would drive me, it would lead me to a, non-causal controller, so my design would be useless. And if I had a smaller power, then I would have uh, an extra delay, which is not a good thing in terms of the response, okay? You want to always reduce the delay. You want to give your order, and you want your order to be accomplished as soon as possible. Is this clear? So maybe there is a slide here. Okay, so uh, your, you select the AM, then to select to build the BM, you, you place here, you place here your coefficients, such that the static gain is one, and then, and then, uh, you add this z, a power of z, such that the delay of this specified model is the delay of the open loop plan. Okay. Now this happens because also there is a detail here. Uh, it's not written in the slide, but look at the plant. Look, look, look at the plant. Uh, this plant has a zero in B. Okay. Let's. You do. You could do some computations to show that uh, B is smaller than one, can be positive or negative, but it's always smaller than one. So you can cancel it. And uh, according to this choice, I'm canceling this zero. Later, we will see the design in which we don't want to cancel that. Okay, so uh, in this case, we had not a zero, otherwise, we, we would have placed it here. Okay, now uh, our B, our B, uh, remember it was KZ minus B, it was the numerator of the open loop model, and I have to factorize it. Uh, as the product of two polynomials, B plus and B minus. B plus has the zeros that I want to cancel, and B minus has the zeros that I don't want to cancel, and eventually f any constant factor, because B plus is monic. That is to say, the limiting coefficient is one. So uh, my B is KZ minus B, and since I want to cancel this zero in B, my B plus is just C minus B, 
and b minus is just a, the other coefficient. Okay? In this way, b plus is monic. So uh, my bm is b minus b prime m. So my b prime m is bm divided by b minus. Okay, and my bm is just z times one plus p one plus p two. And my b minus is just k. So my b prime m is this polynomial that has just one monomial, z times a coefficient. Now let's compute the degree of the observer polynomial. Must comply with this com uh, with this uh, condition. So degree of a is two. Degree of a m is two. Degree of b plus. Remember, b plus is a first order polynomial, so it's one. And I have no integrators, so lambda is zero. And this gives you zero. So your a o is a polynomial that can be anything of degree the minimum degree of a o is zero that is to say if a o is selected with the minimum degree it is a constant and i select this constant to be one could be anything five four whatever you want but this selection simplifies the computation okay now let's solve let's solve the 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 Ophentine equation and we have these conditions for the degree of s and the degree of r prime the degree of s must be smaller than lambda plus degree of a lambda is zero degree of a is two so uh, s must be in general a polynomial of degree one could be a constant but let's assume it is a polynomial of degree one and let the Diophantine equation tells you whether this S0 is zero or not. Okay, so for the moment we keep it. We know that this is the most general solution that we can have. And degree of R prime is given by this expression. So I place here degree of A0, which is zero. Degree of AM, which is two, minus two, minus lambda, this is zero. Okay, so degree of R prime is zero. R prime is a constant. So my Diophantine equation that I wrote here in the top of this slide is something like z minus one up to lambda, which is just a constant because lambda is zero. This is just one. A and A is z minus one, z minus A. And R prime is a constant. So I, I write here R zero. Then B minus is K. S is something, some generic polynomial, S zero, Z plus S one equal to AO, which is one, and AM, which is uh, AM, which is this polynomial, okay? Where I know P1 and P2. So I expand these polynomials, I expand these terms here, and I equate the, coefic the corresponding coefficients, and I get a system of equations. I have three unknowns, R0, S0, and S1, and uh, I get a system of equations and I solve it. It's a linear system of equations. And I solve it, I get R0, S0, and S1. And uh, now I get R from R, R prime by multiplying by Z minus one up to lambda. This is one, so this term is not there because lambda is zero. B plus is uh, z minus lambda, r prime is one, it's a solution of the system of equation. So r is z minus b. T is a o b prime m. Okay, so it's some t zero given by one plus p one plus p two divided by k. And uh, s zero and s one were here at these expressions. So my controller is here okay so uh, i have r u equals to t r minus s y and so this term is part of the r polynomial and i can write it in this form 
Any questions up to now? One comment. One com or, or better, two comments. No. If your polynomials A and AN are monic, that is to say the leading coefficients are one, this is usually the case. And uh, if you if you select your AO polynomial to be um, to be your AO polynomial to be monic also, so the leading coefficient of AO to be one, and also your B plus to be uh, to be uh, monic, so again the leading coefficients to be one, then the R prime polynomial will be monic. That is to say, at this point, you know, without, without, uh, without that is R zero, without solving any equations that R zero is one. So you can get rid of one of the unknowns immediately. Okay, the proof is not difficult. Uh, it uh, comes from the fact that this term dominates this other term. Okay, uh, you multiply by b plus and if you multiply this by b plus you get here r and r dominates s by causality of the controller a multiplies b and you have multiplied everything by b plus b plus b minus a dominates the degree of b plus b minus which is b by causality of the plan so this term here the leading coefficient of this polynomial on the left is uh, the leading coefficient of this of this term on the here, this first term here. Okay, and since this is monic, because this is monic, this is monic, and this is monic, uh, you get uh, a monic polynomial, and here you also get a monic polynomial. Okay, so the R the Term, the leading term of R prime must be one. So the conclusion is A, AM, B plus, and AO monic implies R monic, that is to say R prime monic. And in this case, R prime is just a constant, so it's just one. That is one, one of the comments. The other comment is this. You can expand this in, using brute force multiplications and summing all the powers, all the coefficients of the corresponding powers and so on. But you can also uh, uh, use the so-called principle of identities. And you give values of Z, you give num uh, assume attribute numbers to the values of Z, and you get equations. For instance, if you get uh, Z equal to one, then this term here vanishes and you get k s0 plus s1 equals to 1 plus p1 plus p2. Okay, and you immediately get one equation. Now you get z equal to a, and again you kill this. Okay, and you get k s0 a plus s1 equals to a squared plus p1 a plus p2. And of course, you get the same values out of this equation. So by selecting z equal to uh, values that uh, make some of these coefficients to vanish, in this case it was z equal to one and z equal to y, then you get immediately obtained the equations. This is a practical way of doing the computations. Any questions? Let's see a simulation to see what happens. So suppose that psi is 0.7 omega n equal to one, and uh, you can see here at the top y, the output, so the, po the position of the angle of the motor in response to, to a step. And here you see the tension. You see that this, this tension is oscillating. Why so? Because you are canceling a zero, and this zero, if you, do the, if you compute it, is uh, inside unit circle. But it's over the negative real part, negative real axis. Okay. Now, when you have a negative pole, remember that the transients are 
the position of the poles up to some k. Okay, so if you have a pole, let's say minus 0.5, suppose that the zero would be at 0.5, you have a pole at minus 0.5. What you get, you have minus 0.5 plus 0.25 minus 0.125 and so on. So the sign is oscillating, is switching from positive to negative in each equation. This is what causes this oscillation. And this oscillation appears in the input, but not at the output. This is due to the pole zero cancellation. So there is a hidden mode, okay? So a mode that works internally to the system, to the control system, that makes your uh, control variable to oscillate, but the output between the input, which is a step, and the output, which is this thing out here, everything looks, looks nice, okay? You can say, okay, let's change the, the same thing time to see if I get rid of this oscillation. No, you, you don't get it. You don't get rid of it because you are always canceling this zero. Okay, so uh, perhaps the oscillation gets uh, not so stringent because you are changing H. Uh, now you can see some uh, fluctuations in the output due to the fact that your uh, sampling rate is. Uh, lower so between sampling times you will have some dynamics that you can see here but you have not show you have not solved this problem this problem comes from the fact that you are canceling a zero which is inside the unit circle but with a negative real part so perhaps one uh, one uh, uh, solution or one suggestion that comes from this simulation is that you don't cancel this zero. Okay? The algorithm allows you to cancel or not to cancel it. Uh, the fact that you cancel it or you don't cancel it, it's an engineering decision. Okay, so let's see briefly the design with this cancellation. And um, now, since I have my, I don't want to cancel the zero, I must have it. So my BM must have the zero. So I write here Z minus B, okay? That's a open loop plant zero. And I want to keep it in the closed loop transfer function. So this is not to be canceled. The AM is the same, okay? Now, I must multiply this by uh, a factor uh, with such that two things happen. One, static n equal to one. Sec second thing, I want the least possible delay. Now, uh, what do I do? I know that the static delay is obtained by z equal to one. So I make z equal to one in this first fraction. And then I write here the inverse of that fraction, because when I do z equal to one, I just get the product, this product is just one. Okay, so this choice, which is the inverse of the first fraction for z equal to one, ensures static n equal to one. Now, what about having powers of z here? Let's look at the delays and remember the least possible delay, what has mean é um, the difference of the poles and zeros in the original open loop plan. You had two poles and one zero, so the delay is one. Now, when I write this, what is the delay? Okay, I have two poles and already one zero, so the delay is one. I, can, I cannot do it yet. So I cannot even multiply by z because this would give me a non-causal control. So this is the BM of AM. So my AM is this term, my BM is this term here. And now things proceed as usual. So uh, B is B, B plus B minus. And remember that B is KZ minus B. Now I'm not canceling the zero. So my B, B minus must have Z minus B. And then there, there is the story of this K. I could place it here in B minus or in B, B plus or in B minus. 
but uh, I want B plus to be monic. So I select B plus equal to one and I include the K in B minus. In this way, B plus B minus gives you B, the original B polynomial. Now, remember that P, B prime M is BM that divided by B minus, okay? And uh, this will give me a polynomial, okay? If you are doing your computations at home or in your test, and you end up with something which is a fraction, that's a mistake, okay? That's a mistake, a fraction, uh, um, a fraction in Z, so a quotient of polynomials in Z, that's a mistake because B minus always factorizes BM, okay? B minus, uh, the zeros that you don't want to cancel, so you want to keep it. So if you keep it, you keep it, and since you keep it, they are in BM. I repeat this in Portuguese. O quociente do BM e do B menos é sempre um polinômio. Porquê? Porque as raízes do B menos são, ou B menos, são os, os zeros que nós queremos manter. Se os queremos manter, estes termos têm que estar em BM. Portanto, BM tem sempre B menos. Ok? If you look at BM, in our case, Bm is what is z minus b, and then this coefficient one plus p one plus p two divided by one minus b. So z minus b is there. Now we divide it by one minus uh, by z minus b. We divide it by z minus b. Okay, and these two terms cancel out, and you get in this case it was just a constant. In any case, it will be a polynomial, not a coefficient, a, a quotient of polynomials. Okay, now you compute AO, and the minimum degree of AO is one. And uh, since it is one, I select AO to B, that's a scholar academic choice of AO. Uh, it's a polynomial of degree one, I select it to be all, to have all the zeros, all the roots at the origin, so it's just C. And then uh, I compute the conditions on S. S will be a first order polynomial. The condition on uh, R prime, which is our first order now. And uh, I write the, the I write the Offenheim equation, and I uh, solve it. I get the equations I have not written here. Uh, I make z equal to one, and this vanishes. This, this time I get one equation. Then z equal to a, and then z equals to minus r one. So I get three equations in this way, and I solve them, and I get r one and the other terms. Okay. T is a o b b prime m, and now if I do a simulation, if I do a simulation. Then I got rid of that nasty oscillation of the manipulated variable. Okay. Uh, let me make you a remark. In, uh, usually, when you design a control system, then you do a simulation and you look at the output. Uh, always look also at the input, at the manipulated variable, because you can have non realistic manipulated variables or manipulated variables that vary so much that they destroy your equator. For instance, if you have a valve and the valve is oscillating too much, the useful life of the valve will be reduced. Any question about this example? Okay, now I have a number of examples. I'm not going through them. Uh, this is one of the examples that the solution is here. Uh, what I suggest you is to solve by yourselves these examples and then compare with my solutions. Uh, this is another one in which we have a double integrator and uh, it's pretty much the same. So my, the last thing that I would, I would like to, 
to make to uh, make a comment is on the choice of the observer polynomial. So this choice is uh, is quite important. So suppose that uh, you have your system. Now I've placed here instead of having t divided by r and s divided by r. I moved the common term one over r to inside the loop. Okay, so this is equivalent. Okay, because you have uh, u is equal one divided by r t reference s uh, the output. So uh, I have here my y is different from x just because of the noise. So forget about the noises p e and v. And then uh, I have one one problem because T and S, they are isolated polynomials, so I only have zeros and no poles. So this becomes non-causal. So if I want to do a simulation, I have I must have a, some polynomial it can be just a power of z, okay? That I divide and multiply. Okay, so this is just to make these questions. This. Um, uh, terms causal and it's equivalent. So this is can be the observer polynomial in this case, or could be just z up to some value. It's immaterial. Just to have causality if you want to simulate this in simulink. Now, uh, I did a design in which so my process is 0.1 divided by z minus one. My HM is 0.2 divided by Z minus 0.8. These numbers are not critical. I want to specify one integrator. And then my, my observer polynomial is not just a power of Z, but it's a power of Z minus G. And I will select different values for this G. Okay. And I have sensor noise E and disturbances, input disturbances V. So if I compute using standard uh, uh, rules for the block diagram, uh, the input output uh, with values for T, S and R, so I solve the problem, it's not solved here. And I compute X, X is this, the true plant that you never know because what you measure is Y with noise. Okay. And you get this expression. Now, Look here, what happens? Uh, consider that you have some observation noise E. So the observation noise is something that is corrupting the measure of the output. And uh, if, you, if you compute the gain between the noise and the output, okay, you have here the gain and this is a phase. In the low frequency, okay, I have here two, two possibilities. One with g equal to zero, so this is the academic uh, choice, and this is what I call the engineering choice. So my g is not zero, it's 0.99, okay? And well, in the low frequency, it's okay. And everything has the same. Both choices for selecting the observer polynomial Use the same gain between the noise and the output. Now, in the high frequency, you have an attenuation, a large attenuation, when you, instead of selecting the pole of the observer at the origin, you select it at 0.99. Okay, you have 15 dB of attenuation. Uh, you can, if you do a simulation of in which the noise is just a, a sinusoid, okay? You have a, the sinusoid uh, at the output, you will see a sinusoid at the output for g equal to zero, which is this large one. But if you instead use g equal to 0.99, you see it's very much attenuated. So the, the tuning the, the, the observer pole from the origin to something which is slower and of course if instead of 0.99 i had a, i think i would be shifting this the decayed curve so by doing this detuning i'm 
cancelling output noise. Okay, this is filtering output noise, uh, high frequency noise, high frequency noise. Now, what happens with respect to disturbances in the low frequency? Okay, in the low frequencies is the opposite, so I'm degrading. Okay, so for g with g equal to zero, if you if I have a low frequency disturbance, uh, you have this very attenuated response. But if you have uh, uh, g equal to 0 0.99, the fluctuations of the disturbance affect affect you largely uh, the output. Okay, so there is a trade-off in selecting the pole of the observer. And uh, uh, by by moving the zero away from the, the zero away from the uh, the origin, you are cancelling output uh, high frequency noise, which is a very good thing, but you are degrading the response to uh, input uh, disturbances in the low frequency. Which is a bad, a bad thing. So you have a compromise. You have to select a compromise. My personal experience from a number of projects with real systems is that it is very important that you use, you play with this, uh, with this pole. Okay. I have, um, uh, I had two, two interesting examples. One, what was a uh, lab system in which we had um, a d and da converters with a lot of noise and uh, which equal to zero with all the poles of the observer at the origin it was simply not working then you detune your the your pole of the observer and it started working and perhaps a more interesting thing was uh, uh, i have a paper that documents it uh, application to anesthesia and uh, in uh, if you select the the pole at uh, if you detune it from the origin you get much better results okay and when i say uh, applying these methods to anesthesia i really mean uh, actual patients not simulation so in actual patients uh, this was a very important tuning knob so it's a practical, practical situation. If you are at your exam and I say it's nothing, uh, you select the pole at the origin, which is the one that gives you the simplest, uh, uh, the simplest computation uh, load. Uh, so this is this concludes what I wanted to say about uh, polynomial control. And uh, I would like to know if 